Today I'm going to show you how to make a waxed end for inseaming. These are the components that we're going to be using today. Over here we have the taper and it's called a taper because it's a piece of Dacron thread that tapers down really skinny at the ends. And then we've got hand wax and a piece of leather. And there's the hand wax that comes in a little cup. We've got 20 pound fishing line, a piece of beeswax, and an awl. Now if you're wondering where to get these things, the tapers come from a company called Maine Thread. That's Maine like the state, M-A-I-N-E, thread.com. They sell the tapers. And I buy my hand wax from Panhandle Leather in Amarillo, Texas. I've got my bristle. It's a piece of 20 pound fishing line and I like to cut it about 10 inches long. And I'm going to scratch up about 2 inches of one end. If you don't scratch it up then your fishing line will be slick and your thread will just slide right off of it. You need to scratch it up gently because sometimes you'll break it with the sandpaper. And next I'm going to use my hand wax and wax up the part that I just scratched. Because I want my thread to stick to this bristle, the fishing line, and not slide off. There we go. Now I've already waxed this thread. And I'll wax it again just to show you. I've got the the wax in a piece of leather so that I don't get my hand all full of wax because as you use it, it softens. All right, my thread is all waxed and I'm ready to attach. The fishing line is the bristle and then the thread is my taper and once I get them together they become a waxed end. Now sometimes the thread tapers down a really long ways, really thin, and other times it's shorter and blunter. And so I can't really tell you to leave so much at the end. What you do is you start wrapping when, at the point on the thread where it's about the same diameter as your 20 pound fishing line. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to wrap it down around the fishing line, around and around toward the end. That's good. Now this is the important part. Now I'm going to hold it taut. I don't know if you can see but I have it just wrapped around a, a screw. Just something, it needs to be wrapped around something that you can pull on and it won't come off. So now I'm going to start wrapping it back over itself. I'm turning it and with each turn I want the thread to lay in right next to the previous turn. You can see I, ha I have it turned just a little bit, I have it slanted just a little. I don't have it exactly perpendicular. I find that I get too much slack in the thread if I have it straight. So turn it just a little, always keeping that thread taut. If you get any slack in your thread, your wraps will be loose and that will make a knot and that will catch on something and yank your thread off your bristle. When you have about half of an inch sticking out, stop. Use your awl, separate a little hole there, feed it through with your thumb and forefinger and then grab it and pull it through. When it comes through that hole, it will make a little pop. You can feel it in your finger. So as soon as it comes through, stop, pull the tail down and make a little hole about an eighth of an inch above the first one and repeat.
you want to end up doing this four to six times. This is what knots it off so it doesn't come unraveled when you're working with it. Okay, I think I can do it one more time. There we go. And now I'm going to use the beeswax. Just rub it gently on the thread. What the beeswax will do is neutralize that stickiness because when you're First, pulling that stitch through. You don't want it sticking together so that you can't pull the stitch through. Later, on the main body of the thread, you want it to, to be waxed with your hand wax, your sticky hand wax, so that when you pull that thread down tight, it will lock in place. But when you're trying to get both bristles through, you want them to be able to slide through. So here we've attached the fishing line to the thread, and now our taper and fishing line has become a waxed end. It's going to be difficult to see it, but you can see how it just joins so seamlessly the thread to the bristle. That's what you want. I'm going to close this week by talking about my friend Dick Anderson with Thornapple River Boots. That's thornappleriverboots.com. Dick makes sewing all halves and curved sewing alls. If you're making waxed ends, then you must be inseaming. And if you're inseaming, you need, need a handle or a haft, and you need a curved sewing all. And you can get those from Dick Anderson at thornappleriverboots.com. Here's a better look at some of Dick's sewing all halves and curved sewing alls. This is the number one. It doesn't have a lot of curve. The number two with more curve. And the number three with a very nice sharp curve. I personally use the number two most of the time, but you might have a different preference. See the handles, how pretty they are? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.